The Game Boy Game of the Week is Chalvo 55. This game was only ever released in Japan. I'd never heard of it before, but I saw it mentioned on a list of Game Boy hidden gems, so I decided to pick up a copy and try it out. The main gameplay mechanic is bouncing, which I thought was quite clever and pretty unique, especially for the time. You play as a little robot that has to stop an alien ship from invading your planet. So you spend your time bouncing around the inside of a large spaceship, collecting keys to open up the boss room at the end of each level, all while avoiding enemies and solving puzzles. So I'll start with what I really liked about this game. Uh, the game looks really good. The character sprites are large and easy to see, but never take up too much space on the screen. Also the shading is great on the sprites, they never get lost in the backgrounds. Everything is just really crisp and clear. The levels all have different visual themes, which is nice. It keeps the game looking fresh. As for sound, the game has nice, high-quality music. The sound effects work well, too, so no complaints there. In regards to play control, so I mentioned that the primary gameplay mechanic is bouncing, right? And the developers really nailed the bouncing physics. Uh, bouncing around feels perfectly natural and exactly how I would expect it to feel and want it to feel in a video game. Uh, anytime I lose a life while bouncing around, it pretty much always feels like my fault as the player and not the fault of the control or the physics, which is exactly how things should be. <laughs> it's kind of funny. When I say bouncing is the primary gameplay mechanic, I should say it's almost the only gameplay mechanic. Your character only has one move. Just bounce. No jumping, no ducking, no shooting, just bouncing. Uh, there is one other control. I mean, you can press the B button to grab onto specific blocks to push them forward. So bouncing around, plus the rare pushing of a block, make up all of the control in the game. And I am very impressed with the type of challenges the designers came up with. I mean, there are spikes to avoid, enemies to deal with, uh, moving platforms, springs, portals, bumpers, bosses all based around a pure bouncing mechanic, and they're fun. I enjoyed trying to figure out how to get through each room, which is the first part of the challenge, and then actually performing the action to get through them. Your goal in each level is to collect the five keys needed to open up the door to the boss room. Each level ends with a boss fight, and I was consistently impressed with the ideas the designers came up with for new original boss fights based purely on bouncing. They're simple, but still challenging. It's pretty cool. Now here's something that really, really impressed me. So this game is all about bouncing, which means the rooms you explore have a lot of verticality to them. This also means there are many, many times when you can't see what's below you. There could be anything down there, including instant death. But here's the thing. There were dozens and dozens of situations where I had to fall downwards without being able to see what was below me but the game never cheated me with a cheap death. The level designers almost always show me the very top of some block that's below me that I can safely jump to. And if there isn't a block I can see, then all I need to do is fall directly downwards and I'll land safely. And this held true every single time I was in this situation. And I absolutely applaud the level designers for this choice. So that was all the stuff I liked about the game. Now for the stuff I didn't like. I mentioned that the music is good and high quality, but unfortunately it feels completely out of place in this game. I'd say the music would be more appropriate in maybe a cute Kirby style game, but I don't know. This game opens up with a cutscene with a pretty scary looking enemy about to attack your home planet, and then immediately starts up with this cute, relaxing, peppy, upbeat tune. Even as someone who adores Game Boy music and chiptune music in general, this music really didn't do it for me. Another problem is the extra lives mechanic, which is a pretty common issue for games from this time period. Having an extra lives mechanic does absolutely nothing to make the game more fun. Uh, many of the rooms make the player wait, and waiting is almost never a good gameplay mechanic. It's things like waiting for slow moving platforms to get into the right position or an enemy to get into the right position so I can bounce over him. Oh my goodness, there was this one room where I had to wait a full 12 seconds for an enemy to be in the right place for me to bounce over him. 
And then a few moments later, I ended up dying on another puzzle. So I was sent back to the beginning of the room, which means waiting for the same enemy again to get into the right position so I could jump over him. Ugh. Making the player wait in a video game isn't always a problem, and this can seem like a minor complaint, but it really starts to add up after a while. Now, this last point I want to make is my biggest complaint about the game. And unfortunately, I think it ruins the game completely, to the point where I was forcing myself to get through level 2, let alone any of the levels after that. <sighs> to explain the problem, I need to talk a little more about the level design. So each level is split up into rooms, and there's about 12 rooms per level. One of the rooms in each level will have a door that leads to the boss room, but it doesn't open until you've collected the five keys scattered around in different rooms. Every room has at least one entrance and exit, but sometimes they'll have two, three, or more. That means the player will be exploring to find the keys. The game does include an in-game map to help you stay oriented, but it's pretty basic. It just shows you where you are, but doesn't show things like which rooms are connected to each other or where any of the items are or anything. Now this whole exploring thing wouldn't be too bad, but the problem is every time you leave and re-enter a room, the entire room is reset. Some rooms have enemies, some rooms have block moving puzzles. I already mentioned boss keys, but in addition to that, most rooms also have a room key that must be collected before you can exit the room. So here I am playing the game, looking for boss keys, trying to figure out where to go. So if I step briefly into the next room, only to find out, whoops, it's not the way I need to go. So I turn back around. Now everything in the original room is now reset. Enemies, block puzzles, room keys have to be done all over again. Now I can't think of a single room in this game that was poorly designed. Every room presents a fun puzzle to figure out and get through. But, I also can't think of a single room that I enjoyed doing twice. And I didn't have to do rooms just twice. I was going through these rooms three, four, five times trying to locate the boss keys and then get to the exit. This game was already a puzzle game and an action game, which I think works pretty well. But when you add that it is also an exploration game, it all falls apart. I wanted to keep playing because every new level introduced new fun little gameplay elements and new fun puzzles and new fun challenges. But I knew, I knew that no matter how fun a room was, I knew I'd be forced to go through the same room again and again, and that just killed the game for me. So how would I fix this game? I'd get rid of the exploration. Instead, make it linear. So I'm a robot working my way through a ship full of puzzles and challenges to get to the boss. Simple. Keep everything the same, the enemies, the platforms, the room keys. Uh, maybe get rid of the boss keys, just because there's no point to them anymore if the game is linear. Or better yet, just make them room keys that the player needs to collect before they can move on to the next room. Since a lot of the time in this game is spent trying to figure out where to go, uh, by removing the exploration elements, the game will go by pretty quickly but I think adding enough rooms to fill out just two more levels would be enough to consider this a complete game. Oh man, especially if they added a super simple hard mode toggle, like in the original Super Mario Brothers, where all the Goombas are now the indestructible Buzzy Beetles. You know, something simple like that to keep another playthrough fresh. Uh, I'd also get rid of the extra lives mechanic. Uh, as the game is now, the game has one hit deaths, and when you die, you start back at the beginning of the room with everything reset. Uh, I think this works well, I wouldn't change anything there, but just get rid of the extra lives and let the player try as many times as they want. There's no reason to make the player replay the whole level just because they couldn't make it through one room. Other than that, I think I just changed the sprite for the boss keys that you need to collect to make them look more like a key or something instead of a generic diamond shape, but that's a pretty minor nitpick. In conclusion? This game has so much good going for it, but sadly does way too much to waste the player's time. It's fun, but tedious. It's cute, but repetitive. It's long, but annoying. It looks so good on the surface, 
but very quickly becomes just a chore.